When I started music, I was in the fourth grade and I started on clarinet and I loved music. My parents got so annoyed with me, I used to practice two hours a day and they were like, stop, 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 stop. Remember that, mom? <laughs> so um, I, I, just, I just loved it and by the time I got to high school, um, I ended up playing the bass clarinet because my clarinet was in the shop and it was the longest we'd ever been separated from each other. Um, but, <laughs> but in high school, um, I got to be in the same rank as the sousaphone, and I'd never seen a sousaphone before. It was so shiny, big, and loud, and I thought, oh, I have to play that. That's it. Um, so I took a tuba home over the summer, taught myself how to read bass clef, and it, I've been playing ever since, and I just realized that this year is my 20th year of playing the tuba, so it's like, wow! <laughs> Um, I wanted this recital to also be a way to show some of the things I've, I've experienced and learned about playing the tuba. And if there are any people out there, students that are, you know, interested in playing the tuba, they can get a taste of um, what, what there is out there. Um, so I will start with the, um, the Walter Sear, um, the third movement from the tuba unaccompanied. <coughs> So um, one of the things that I learned was, you know, just go for it. Um, when I wanted to learn the tuba, no one would teach me, so I taught myself. Um, and it, you know, made me kind of be more independent. Um, I uh, carried that with me when I went to college. And I went to UC Davis for my undergrad. And um, I was a little bit shy playing with the college groups, um, but over time um, I got more confident. And uh, this kind of segues into chamber music. Um, I had been used to playing in the concert band, the marching band, all kinds of large ensembles. And um, 
Paulette Davis, they wanted to create these brass quintets. And um, I said yes. But it turns out I said yes to three different groups. <laughs> and that was a problem. So, um, <laughs> so two of those other groups did, did not form. Um, and um, my, my long lasting group, the Compass Point Quintet, um, we, um, it was my first time really being exposed as a musician. And that was really scary. But um, I also learned that I should be prepared for anything. Um, and that's the, the next lesson. Um, we had the opportunity to perform for all kinds of events at UC Davis, especially at the Mandavi Center. And there was this one time where we had this really hoity-toity event. And I mean, they had catered food and crab cake muffin things. And you know, us college kids were like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. <laughs> and so they asked us to play 15 minutes of music. And so with the music that we had, it was you know, five pieces, three, you know, three minutes each. Um, and the music department in the Mandavi Center are probably about like a 10 minute walk, maybe 15, 20 minutes if you're lugging the tuba with you. And so I just thought, okay, I'm going to bring my five pieces, and that's it. We get there, we play our five pieces, they loved it, they wanted more, and I thought, uh-oh, I only have the five pieces. Everybody else had their music, the extra music, and I didn't, and I thought, oh man, how are we gonna do this? So we play some of the songs faster, slower, <laughs> again and again and again. <laughs> So from that event, from that gig, I realized just bring everything. Just bring all your music just in case. That way I never have that moment. <laughs> Some people said, didn't you just play that? No. <laughs> so um, the next piece that I'm going to play is um, an excerpt from the Eric Uwazen Shadow Catcher. And I couldn't have the brass quintet perform tonight, so I have a video of our performance at the Mandavi Center. And um, this is with the American River Brass Quintet. Um, and it was funny because all except for well, Paul Marenko, Sarah Meyer Peter, and I, we went to Davis. And then we all went to Sac State. And Daniel Prince was at Sac State. Adam Brover was from Cal Poly, but he hung around and then eventually went to Sac State. So we were all from this area. And um, so this is us at the Mandavi <coughs> Center. lesson I learned is never say never. So when I was a freshman at UC Davis, um, we had the opportunity to go see music concerts at um, from in Berkeley, all over the Bay Area, and so we would all carpool together. And this one concert by the um, San Francisco Contemporary Music Players, um, they were performing a David Lang piece. And um, that piece was called Are You Experienced? And it's based off of um, Jimi Hendrix and his style of playing. And what was interesting about that was that Peter Warhoftig um, was playing electric tuba, electrified tuba. And I thought, what? How is that a thing? <laughs> so I went and saw it, and it was really awesome. I thought, man, that would be so cool to be able to do something like that. <sighs> Maybe one of these days. 
I don't know if that's possible for me. And then, lo and behold, this year, I learned about my uh, abilities with the silent brass mute, and I thought, oh my gosh, this is it, this is it. So um, uh, I experimented with a little bit with Dr. Efferson and the commercial music students, and uh, there are a lot of cool sound effects and things that you can do, and because um, the mute acts as a isolation, you know, isolation booth in a way, those um, waves, those sounds, uh, frequencies can be isolated and plugged into the guitar stomp pedal, and then those can be altered. Um, not so much for woodwinds, um, <laughs> but for brass with that type of mute, that's possible. So I'm going to do a little experimentation. You know, are, are you experienced? Yeah. yeah. <laughs>
So my next lesson is you are not alone. Um, when I finished at UC Davis, um, I had been used to playing in the marching band. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. Yes. <laughs> the orchestra, the contraband, the wind ensemble, brass quintet, the musical, um, pretty much everything. And when it came time for graduation, um, I kept thinking, like, who's going to want me to play? Who's going to pay me to play? You know, violins, they can play in any string quartet, play at any wedding. They're set for life. So, sadly, I was contemplating quitting the tuba because I didn't know of any opportunities. Um, and then I went to a concert uh, with the All Hollows Orchestra, which is now Vita Academy, and I met Brian Schlegel, and he was from former Marine Band, and he told me that I should come to Sac State. There's a studio, meaning there's multiple other tuba players and euphonium players, and you can get you know hooked into the community. And before you know it, you know someone will call you to sub, um, and you know gigs will come. And um, I did that. I went to Sac State. I ended up doing a double masters in tuba performance and composition. And uh, Brian was right. I met Julian Dixon here. <laughs> Professor of tuba at Sac State and principal tubist for the Sacville and Opera. And uh, it has been a great experience having been at Sac State. And uh, yes. <laughs> so um, this next piece, Elegy for a King, is my composition that I wrote in 2008 for Black History Month. And I originally wrote it as a trio um, for our studio. Um, but it was very tiring and taxing because it's, it's uh, think of it as a Gregorian chant, but with contemporary harmonies. And so it's a lot of long tones, and so when I adapted it for a quartet, it took the burden off. Um, so we ended up premiering this um, on the East Coast at the International Tuba Euphonium Conference in Cincinnati, and uh, everyone liked it. Um, one of the professors, Dr. Joanna Ross Hersey from UNC Pembroke loved it, and she brought a copy with her to her school, and they were playing it. She ended up uh, recording a, an album of all female composers for tuba, and um, my piece, this piece, was one of the tracks on there, so it was really cool. I got to tell people, I'm on iTunes! <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, it's just, <coughs> when I wrote this piece, um, I wanted to do something that, you know, for Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., and it's very solemn, um, yet hopeful, and um, the studio here from Sac State, they've been so great, um, performed it a couple times already this semester, and, and they just really love it, and I feel honored to be able to perform that with them, and uh, yeah, so we'll be performing Elegy for a King.
Okay, so the next lesson I learned was expand your horizons. That could mean so many different things. Um, I had the opportunity a few years back to um, write a piece for a um, contemporary music ensemble called Trio Mode. And they had a project called Convergence where they were doing a documentary on Oak Park, the history of Oak Park. And so they commissioned me to write a jazzy style piece that's kind of like Gershwin about Oak Park. And I thought, I don't know anything about Oak Park. So <laughs> I looked it up <laughs> during that time period that they were referring to. And it turns out that Oak Park was kind of like the getaway destination in the 19 teens for people that lived and worked, or that worked in Sacramento. So um, they had uh, Oak, the, the trains would um, make their terminal stop in Oak Park at Joyland. And Joyland was like the amusement park. Um, they had carnival rides. Um, they, this is where they had you know, actual light bulbs, you know, electricity. Um, there was a zoo, uh, all kinds of stuff. People could dance, there were concerts being performed. Um, and so I thought of um, those co California commercials or come to California, we got the skiing, we got the surfing, the hiking, but in the style of the 19 teens. Um, so I'm gonna show you um, a, a couple minutes of the documentary that this music went with and then the actual audio of the piece. <clears throat> celebration and study. It has also involved consternation and controversy. The identity that Oak Park has today is uh, very complicated. Oak Park has always been a multicultural melange of different ethnic groups, different socioeconomic incomes, and as a result, it's never been a static community in that regard. It's always been a changing community. A map of the neighborhood tells much of the story. Isolated from the city center, its streets and roads cut at odd angles. And like the streets, its very stories intersect unevenly. We have a tale that must be told. Mm -hmm. Next, uh, we'll have the Grand Isle Fire Brigade join me up on stage. Um, so this is part of expanding my horizons. Um, I had just finished playing the Nutcracker, and I get a phone call from this guy named EJ asking if I could help sub in their group doing Oktoberfest music for three months. And I thought, okay, sure. <laughs> um, it's been six years. <laughs> and it's been great. It's been so much fun. Um, and uh, with this group, um, we play at all kinds of festivals, private parties, corporate functions, and um, it's really cool all the different places you get to be that, you know, if you weren't a musician, you wouldn't have um, that kind of uh, exposure. So um, we will perform the Beer Barrel Polka, and then we're gonna switch things up and do a little jazz after that. Um, we play many different styles of music throughout the year, so, um, yes, so, one second.
Okay. <laughs> it's falling off. <laughs> All right, so my last lesson uh, about playing the tuba, playing sousaphone, playing music in general is to always have fun. And um, one of the things I've always wanted to do is play New Orleans street band music. So <laughs> um, the ladies can start heading over. Um, basically, uh, I remember being at an iTech conference, I believe it was in Tucson, and Andrew Hicks, um, who played, he used to play for the Boston Brass Quintet, and he talked about how he knew nothing about jazz, and he just like jumped into it, and it was just the, the, like the funnest yeah. thing that he could ever do. And so I've been trying to do that with learning jazz, trad jazz, all kinds of jazz, and um, the thing about New Orleans music is just, it's so lively and it's, wherever you go, it's a party. And um, I'm very fortunate to have the Double X Brass Band um, joining me today. <laughs> we are a newly formed group. And uh, let's thank Matt for joining in, filling in on trumpet. <laughs> Thank you. 
sorry. Thank you. Uh, this last song we're going to do requires a little crowd participation. It's really easy. Um, you'll just repeat after what we say. Um, I might yell at you a little bit, but that's okay. I'm sure you've been through it before. It happens. We'll talk about it later. We can talk about our emotions after. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Y'all give it up for Portia. She's been up here playing the entire time. We just come here for 10, 15 minutes, and she's just like, oh, yeah, I'll be here for three hours. Don't worry. Don't commercial music department, the Fine Applied Arts Division Office, the Double X Brass Band, GIFB, Trio Mode, UC Davis Music, <laughs> and, <laughs> and me. <laughs> no, just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> if I just perform to nothing. <laughs> um, so now you can tell all your friends that you know more things that the tuba is, you know, possible. Um, <laughs> and uh, if you know of anybody that's wanting to learn tuba or, or is interested, um, some schools, I'm trying to, my mission in life is to create an army of tuba players. 
So <laughs> every child should have a tuba. <laughs> so I'm making that my mission here in Sacramento and hopefully reaching um, throughout the state and possibly the world um, to get more kids, you know, exposure to the tuba. That way it's not some sort of punishment or, you know, <laughs> you're the last kid, last straw kind of deal. Like, I want students to like, want to gravitate to the tuba like I did. Like, you know, I mean, it was superficial. It was big, shiny, and loud, but, you know, I love the tuba. <laughs> so I want to share that with everybody. And so if you know of any students, any schools that, you know, need to help in the tuba department, um, that's, that's where I'm trying to make a difference here in Sacramento because if we have more students playing tubas, then we'll have more adults playing tubas. And then all of our community groups and colleges will have tuba players. <laughs> so um, I want to thank you all again for coming. And uh, yes, have a good night. Thank you again. Yeah.